But a new invention, the owner of the famous uh, diorama, Louis Jean Mandre Dagge, was announced by the Secretary of Paris Academy of Sciences, uh, Francois Araga, on the 7th of uh, January 1839. And on the 29th of January, he received a letter from his uh, scholar colleague from uh, the UK, William Henry Fox Talbot, who informed that several days later he would be honored uh, to present uh, to the Academy of uh, Sciences uh, the invention uh, of uh, two uh, processes uh, that belongs to him, uh, not uh, to Dagger, and that is uh, fixing images uh, given by camera obscura and uh, treatment of these images in such a way that uh, they will not uh, be prone to further light impact. And that was the uh, um, start of the endless uh, dispute, uh, and uh, it also uh, was a start of uh, the report uh, that was given by Talbert uh, to the Royal Society, and it, which is called Some Account of the Art of uh, Photogenic uh, Drawing, or the process by which natural objects may be made to delineate themselves without the aid of the artist's pencils. In May next year, members of St. Petersburg Academy of Sciences could see these photogenic drawings and study the method of their creation. That was made possible thanks to fast uh, operation of Iosif Gamel, who was uh, associate member of the Academy since uh, 1813, and in 1829 he was elected ordinary academician in the chair of technology and uh, chemistry used in art and craft, and uh, Gamel was to study the innovations uh, of uh, cross-border technologies uh, and industries, and uh, he visited European and American country, uh, cities for uh, that. And uh, Gamel's uh, Petersburg uh, colleagues uh, uh, were interested uh, in uh, the possibility of uh, using uh, the uh, natural history objects uh, as uh, put forward by uh, Dagger, and they sent him to Paris. But Gamel did not go to Paris first. In late 1839, he first came to London, where, according to his information, there were photographic experiments going on. And he met uh, Talbot, whom he called English Dagger. And personally, from the scholar himself, uh, Gamel learned uh, about the details of uh, his uh, research activity. And on the 4th of May, 1839, uh, Gamel writes a letter saying that he sends a box uh, that contains uh, samples of paper and uh, samples of photogenic drawings, as well as objects needed for their reproducing and fixing, uh, together with uh, the guidance, which is not yet perfect, to the process. Regrettably, Gamel did not uh, enclose the list of uh, objects, uh, but he describes uh, the technology of uh, their production that were placed on uh, the treated paper and exposed to sun or daylight. And afterwards, the spots that were not exposed to light remained more or less light, and therefore a picture was formed. And they were washed with pure water and special solutions. And he says, uh, camera obscura application was not uh, so successful yet, but uh, still I attach several images made by Talbot, and I'm striving to give the Academy a clear understanding of the new um, innovation and discovery, uh, but still I have to gather more information for that. And uh, he did that uh, very fast, and uh, all the samples sent by Gamel are stored uh, in uh, Petersburg uh, Archive of Russian Academy of uh, Science, and uh, they have 18 uh, pages. And uh, there are seven uh, prints uh, that are samples of the so-called 
botanical drawings. And on the reverse side, uh, there is the same ink uh, inscription uh, that has the name of the plant uh, and uh, Talbot's signature and the date of uh, production, April 1839. And uh, two of them on the reverse side have only the initials of Talbot and uh, 1839, and uh, two others are just uh, blank. And fern leaves, uh, different uh, flowers and branches, so uh, flat objects uh, were placed by the English uh, scholar on paper uh, that was uh, covered uh, by an even layer of uh, uh, silver <laughs> nitrate uh, and uh, were treated afterwards especially uh, and part of the images were given uh, to Gamal by the mother of Talbot uh, and uh, in her diary she mentions uh, that uh, the honorary academician from uh, Petersburg was in a hurry to get the botanic uh, prints uh, to show them to Grand Prince, uh, the second son of Russian Emperor. We do not know uh, whether the Grand Prince Konstantin Nikolaevich uh, saw these photogenic uh, drawings, but still part of them very soon found their way to the Russian capital. Members of uh, Petersburg Academy of Sciences considered them with interest at the meetings of their conference, but uh, they did not like the quality. Therefore, academician of uh, chemistry and uh, botanic, uh, Yuli Fritsch, was commissioned to study the process that uh, Talbot used. Fritcher was fast to perform this task, and on the 24th of May, 1839, he reported to the colleagues about heliographic experiments. And as a chemist, Fritcher mainly focused on fixing the images. Unlike Talbot, he solved uh, the silver nitrate uh, not with hypersulfate uh, but uh, with uh, ammonia solution and uh, he explained uh, that uh, for example this image was exposed to light uh, and uh, became lighter but uh, to make the action of ammonia uh, more visible i cut uh, some edges and uh, the mid part was uh, fixed according to the data uh, received uh, from uh, Gamel. The effect reached uh, by Fritsche is clearly visible even today, which enables us to positively assess the result that he obtained. However, in his conclusion, Fritsche pointed out that the current methods uh, and the apparatus uh, can give science only very limited use. A botanic can uh, use it with uh, benefit uh, when uh, they need uh, to have uh, an accurate uh, image from a regional of a herbarium but uh, uh, very hardly uh, practical use uh, can be large. But still, historians uh, believe uh, that uh, Fritsch's report is uh, the first uh, scientific work on photography in Russia. And uh, we cannot but agree with that, uh, mostly if we mention that uh, two weeks uh, later, Petersburg Academician received a new parcel from uh, England, and uh, Gamel, in the previous uh, letter, asked uh, whether he should uh, send the Academy some uh, not very expensive objects uh, and uh, spend a certain money on that. And uh, obviously, he received a positive response, uh, and uh, he sends a new letter again but again without uh, the full list. But at the beginning of the letter, Gamel says that uh, he received uh, from Talbot several pages uh, that are results of uh, the totally new experiments on fixing in paper more or less remote objects with the help of sun or daylight uh, through glass lenses. And he underscored that he received it uh, very recently. And it means that Talbot uh, was generous to give or sell, which is not important, uh, the newest results of uh, his experiments. Uh, and there were two prints, uh, one with a bust of uh, Homer, and the second uh, was an uh, earlier and less successful attempt to fix uh, 
daylight several buildings in London. Both uh, prints uh, are not present uh, in the archives of Russian Academy of Sciences, but what is a gem of the collection is the third imprint uh, described by Gamel as uh, a part of uh, an old country house of Mr. Talbot uh, that uh, first was uh, imprinted uh, heliographically on another uh, page and then with the help of sun reproduced uh, in this page. And uh, there are uh, several imprints uh, with the windows and uh, tower in Sherrington's tower and uh, that is all dated as April 1839 and uh, naturally the middle window South Gallery uh, is uh, of better quality and Lavishov, a very well known researcher of uh, Talbot, uh, characterized it uh, very highly. And uh, Talbot uh, made it in 1835 with the help of a camera obscura that he, he installed very close uh, to the uh, window. And uh, it took uh, nine or ten minutes uh, to produce uh, it all, uh, to, to make the shooting. And uh, the building was imprinted by itself as Gamel explained in letter and in April 1839 uh, Talbot used this paper print as a negative or as Gamel again explained with the help of the sun he took the image of the window into a paper positive and uh, the uh, print uh, is uh, really very well preserved uh, and uh, the color notes uh, and color saturation are really very good and uh, uh, Talbot's friends uh, even saw the effect of Rembrandt uh, in that. And this print is not very visible and it is hard to say whether it was initially like that or time made an impact on it and of course it loses to paper negative. Talbot received in 1835 as well. In his second letter dated uh, 15th of June 1839, Gamel points out uh, that as for heliographic uh, copying of uh, figures on paper or glass or flat objects placed uh, on the paper treated with silver compound, since uh, my first letter, there have not been uh, much success or progress. And uh, we can have a look at the uh, figurine of a bird and uh, also uh, a bird uh, quill. And then Gamal mentioned uh, that uh, certain progress can be seen in uh, copying uh, to paper heliographically. And that is how uh, two prints uh, with uh, images uh, of uh, a horse and uh, male bust uh, were received. Therefore, Gamal showed different processes uh, to academia in Russia used by Talbot and uh, to wide society and democratic uh, reader the information about this uh, was given in uh, the famous library for reading uh, issue that uh, was published uh, in uh, Peter Petersburg in those times Um, so we are talking about this uh, library for readers. So this was a magazine for industrial news and fashion. So and uh, this issue from March 1839 said from the moment of time when uh, the Paris Academy of Sciences uh, started to discuss uh, these inventions by Daguerre in France, Germany and England, everyone um, remembered that uh, an 
English uh, physicist uh, uh, Talbot really invented uh, the same um, method before the girl. So uh, he uses paper covered with a coat of some black uh, mess, and its composition is a secret. And uh, Mr. Talbot um, uses applies a layer of uh, white mess, uh, uh, silver chloride, on top of the paper. And uh, later on in May 1930. Nine, uh, so an editor in chief, Andrei Sinkovsky, uh, would start to explain achievements by Talbot to the St. Petersburg's uh, audience. So his uh, a nickname in the press was uh, Baron Brombeers, and he started uh, to explain this uh, white painting to, uh, to the readers. Uh, and while Mr. Arago and uh, uh, Daguerre's uh, friends in Paris were uh, trying to make Europe uh, confident that there is a secret uh, which uh, Mr. Daguerre had, uh, so Mr. Talbot started to uh, update the entire scientific community. Uh, on his experiences. So in these publications, uh, Mr. Sankowski tried to uh, highlight the difference between the two processes uh, by the girl and by Talbot. So both of them used uh, the sunlight uh, uh, to impact one and the same substance. Uh, so the um, silver uh, nitrate. And the difference was that uh, Daguerre was trying uh, to show the light parts of an object uh, by uh, the light and the dark ones with the dark ones. So, and uh, in case of the tablet it was opposite. But uh, also if you would put uh, Talbot's uh, image in front of a sheet of the uh, special sensitized uh, paper, then uh, the colors uh, would become uh, like in real life. So uh, this article was describing the two stage process by Talbot and uh, his famous report made in 1839 before the Royal Society in London and published in the English magazine Athenium to um, was added and uh, also Sikorsky wrote that uh, this uh, uh, pastime uh, of uh, taking copies of natural objects uh, by light painting will of course uh, shortly become uh, a fashionable uh, pastime at uh, dachas, at country houses. So also Sinkowski wrote about uh, difficulties with the uh, uh, daguerreotype uh, methods, that it's uh, difficult to carry with you lamps and uh, flasks with iodine. And he said, that the sun uh, uh, writes, uh, offers his prints uh, on the chemical paper. So the production is not very complicated. So the traveling uh, botanical scientists can use it just to reproduce uh, leaves and the lovers can uh, reproduce faces of uh, people. Um, by the end of the article, the editor-in-chief wrote that the light painting may was something uh, that people really admired. However, when he ordered some um, set uh, for um, uh, 
Turbo Types from London. Uh, so he was a little bit disappointed. So uh, Sienkowski uh, covered, it, covered uh, experiments by uh, Hirsch. So in March 1940, the library uh, published an article on light painting and he said at the moment of the highest admirations so we were bold enough uh, for the first time that uh, daguerreotype is a simple optical uh, toy useless for the art and the consequences uh, show that we were right so the microscopic uh, portraits uh, the uh, uh, do not resemble original. So in these uh, gray uh, cold uh, reproductions, you will not recognize a familiar face. Um, so uh, once again, Sienkowski advocated the method of uh, Talbot. So he saw the poetry of uh, similarity with the model. So saying that this light painting uh, Art uh, can only be applicable uh, using the paper. So in February 1841, uh, so his another article said, "Well, just take a picture, just take a sheet of paper of Talbot's paper, put it uh, into the camera obscura, and take it uh, after." Uh, uh, a landscape or an object in light and take it away in several seconds and uh, if you will uh, try to examine it with a candle uh, in a dark room uh, 